Lyrebirds are an iconic species of Australia. They're known worldwide for their power of mimicry and their remarkable displays in the wintertime by the males. Males being the mimics. These lyrebirds are from Sherbrooke Forest, a famous place too, also known worldwide, with an international live broadcast in the 1950s being the first of its kind. These lyrebirds also play a key role in fuel reduction. Here's one at Walkerville Coastal Park, an area actually planned to be burned at Second Creek. It's only 100 metres from the sea. It's scratching up the leaf litter. It's looking for critters. What it does is these male lyrebirds, and this one hasn't got its full plumage yet, scratch up the litter into piles and compost it, make it warm as it rots down. That makes for more insects and that makes for more food for them. This has a fantastic impact on the fuels. An area with lyrebirds in it, in research about to be published, has more than a ton less litter than an area without lyrebirds. This is the area that we are talking about. But this is a photo from the 1950s. The boundary of the road that you can see on the left is the boundary of the crown land that was eventually declared. We're coming up to the very northern part of the park. Now, this park has a strange shape. It has a thin area around this little sandy cliffs here near Walkerville Estate. And then it goes down to the south end and there's lyrebird population separated by that coastal strip. This is the northern end of the park, or the northeasterly end. And now we're looking at Gale Creek catchment, which flows to shallow inlet, unlike the other parts. Gale Creek is a really interesting area. It has a heap of ferns in it. It was last burnt also in the Big Fire in 1926, though there's been smaller burns attempted for ecological purposes since. It's a diverse forest. Diverse in understory, diverse in animals in particular. And it has wet, ferny gullies. These light ferns that look a bit bracken-like are not. They're actually called rainbow fern or soft bracken. And further up the slope, surprisingly, there are king ferns, a very, very old fern. These combinations of ferns make the place very difficult to burn, resilient to the lightning strike. The old tree, this old tree here, is being broken down by lichen and fungi. That was a stump left over from a tree killed in the 1926 fires, more than likely. These fungi are incredibly diverse. These are the fruiting bodies. What we don't see are the mycelium, the threads of the fungi that stretch underground. They're essential ecologically. Fungi are the interface between plants and nutrient. They break down the minerals. They also go through rocks, open up country for roots to follow through. And they eat the leaves. So these fuel loads, these little layers, are eaten by fungi. And here you can see clearly they're on sand, reminding us that this is all one big ancient sand dune. This fungus has been broken up and eaten. And this is the role of mammals, of the wallabies and the wombats. It's also a role for botanists. This is Darcy Duggan. And he came to have a look at this area to find out why a big sand dune would support flying creeks. And he started bouncing in this swamp, jumping up and down. Got me to do it too. And we discovered that underneath these layers, underneath this melaleuca, there are incredible layers of peat. This peat is what funds these swamps. So we started doing some survey work on other things that break down leaf litter. And the thing we're looking for here were moths. So we set up a screen and we put this big mercury light on it. And we sat there during the night and to see what moths would come. And over four or five hours, we've done two of these surveys, we found this group of moths that are amazing. They're called ecphorids. The caterpillars of these moths break down litter layers. They eat dead metaceae leaves, which are the group of plants we include banksias, tea trees, and particularly eucalypts. So the lyrebirds are scratching up the litter and eating the grubs off those metaceae, but they don't eat them all. And so between the lyrebirds and those moths, the mallee moths, we're able to turn over this leaf litter and compost it. 
that's why the layer is so thin. You'd never think it would be so thin after nearly 90 years since the last fire. So it's really important that we do research on this area before we burn it. There are planned burns for Gale Creek and Second Creek. And they're part of the 209 Bushfire Royal Commission that only identified fire as a way of preventing fire. Well, we need to help national parks and the Department of Environment and Primary Industry and to get together with the community and do research on this area in particular, where the communities are safe. So write to the Minister, Ryan Smith, write to the Premier, Dennis Napthane, and send copies of your letters to us, and that's our contact email address. And then you can be involved, as we are, in supporting these government people in doing the research, research that really needs to be done. We need to look before we burn.